This week, our message in a minute will be a bit different. We will be taking a little extra time to prepare our hearts for Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Yesterday, we celebrated Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. For the rest of the week, we will examine what Jesus did on that day of Passover week on his road to Calvary. Monday. Oh, the bliss of the triumphal entry, the excitement, adoration, and praise of all those that thought Jesus was going to set up his earthly kingdom right then. The disciples must have been ecstatic, ready to take up their places of authority in the new regime, places on the right hand and left of Jesus. After the thrill of the crowd settled, the 13 men made their way back to Bethany to the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. After a night's rest, or a restless night, the house began to stir. I wonder what it was like that morning. Was Jesus slightly melancholy, knowing what was coming? Did the disciples have a little extra pep in their step? Were there awkward moments of silence when Jesus walked into the room? Because they, the disciples, were discussing their position of power. Had Martha milked the goat, made the biscuits, fried the eggs, gotten everything ready to go for a huge breakfast? I'm not sure what was going on in the house that morning, but I have a pretty good idea where Mary was, right next to Jesus. It was one of her last opportunities to sit at his feet. Now, she didn't know it was or maybe she did, but regardless, she wasn't going to miss that privilege. Did this morning find you taking advantage of that opportunity to sit in the presence of God? Maybe that morning, even Martha had learned her lesson and was there with Mary. I'm sure the morning didn't last nearly long enough. The time quickly came for Jesus to be about his father's business. The two-mile trip to Jerusalem presents a peculiar moment. On the journey from Bethany, there's a fig tree with no figs. Jesus looks for a snack, but after examining the tree, walks away empty-handed. We've all been there, seeking fruit when there was none to be found. Strawberries, apples, oranges, grapes, tomatoes. You walk up to the tree, the vine, the bush, but nothing. Jesus' response? No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Then down the road he goes. Shortly after, cresting a hill, Jesus comes walking up and Jerusalem comes into view. The tears begin to flow. The Lord weeps. He sees what is, what was, and what is to come. Not just days ahead, but years, generations, millennia. In Luke 19, we see, And when Jesus was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another." because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. The entire city would be completely destroyed physically by an outside army, but the spiritual destruction would be from an inward rebellion, not a rebellion against a rising king, but against a loving savior. Down the path, through the gates, past one, past two, then 10, then hundreds, Hundreds of people that would soon be shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! The Lord continues. He's on a mission. He has to deal with a great atrocity in that day. The atrocity that has occurred countless other days. There were those in the name of God that were keeping people from God. Those that ran the temple had corrupted it. As people came to seek God, to offer their sacrifices, the ones that were required of them, they couldn't, not without being taken advantage of, cheated, extorted, swindled. People whose sole desire was to worship their creator and atone for their sins, couldn't. Jesus declared, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. 
the place that was for drawing closer to God was now pushing people away from God. Worship was replaced by worry. Worry about, could I afford the temple tax? Jesus couldn't stand for it. Out they went. With a fierceness that bordered on the edge between humanity and deity, Jesus drove them away. No longer would anyone be standing between God and his people. Soon, there would be no sacrifice standing between. The whole system was about to be eliminated. The course of history was about to be changed forever. God has never wanted anyone or anything between him and those that seek him. He didn't then, he doesn't now. We sing nothing between my soul and my Savior. Is that true today? That's his desire? Is it yours? In the hours following the cleansing of the temple, Jesus spent his time talking to people around the courtyard. People had come to the temple for Passover to offer their lamb, but now they were talking to the Lamb of God. The purging of the temple, though, did not go unnoticed by religious leaders. Their anger began to swell inside of them. This man must go. Plot, scheme, strategies. All they needed was an opportunity to seize this radical in their midst. The one that had caused them problems for months and years. This was the last straw. Jesus must die. But not on this Monday. The Sanhedrin had a problem. The problem? The people. The excitement of the previous day was still around the city. The spirit and the wisdom of the Lord was magnetic. The message he gave was compelling. It had been for more than two decades. As the Lord made his annual trip for Passover, countless people, even religious leaders, had learned at his feet. More were learning today. If the religious leaders were going to take him, they would have to turn the people against him. Yet today, the people loved him. But the masses are always fickle. They just needed a little time and a little help. As the evening drew near, it was time for rest. His disciples would need it. There were long nights ahead. Time to return to Bethany for the night. As the day comes to a close, the two-mile hike back to Lazarus' house may be leading away from Jerusalem, but it's really another leg on the road to Calvary. Two down, four to go.